friend Jean Serge Gagnon here today we're going to talk about me why you should be following me who am I what's the point right and there's all these leaders out there there's all these people out there and me little old me who am I why you should be following me over all these other leaders maybe you're wondering what my background is how I started online how I became an entrepreneur what is it that I do in my job what my background you know my family my so I'm going to talk about all these things of course if you have any questions you go ahead and add to the comments in this if you're watching this video if you're watching and listening to the audio just ask any question about my background that I missed but we're going to talk about that who am I where I'm from what's my online journey uh, what my family is like where I live what where I grew up all these things we're going to talk about that in just a second but first this so the real question is this what are the strategies techniques and tools that you need to learn to generate residual income from the e-learning boom that's happening right now my name is Jean-Serge Gagnon and welcome to Course Income Secrets right so who is Jean-Serge Gagnon so first off let me say that I'm French Canadian as you can probably tell from my name my accent maybe you think I'm from France but no I'm French Canadian from Quebec in Canada I was actually born in Quebec I've I lived in Quebec until I was six and then we we moved anyways I was all over the country different places with my parents as they changed jobs and did different things and I ended up in growing in my teenage years in Ottawa or the Ottawa area on the Gatineau side the Quebec side and that's where my teenage years were but you know how did I get online maybe you're wondering why should you follow what should you follow me right you've if you've been following me for a little bit maybe you know a little bit about course income secrets you know about maybe you even heard about online simple online strategies I did you know a couple of years back or the original first uh tips I started that, that I did online I've, I've been doing these daily things how did I get into that why do you care and more importantly what's it going to benefit you right so if you're trying to build a business online if you're trying to grow your fans if you're trying to sell something if you're trying to get people to join your business you are trying to do this online today because that's just the way it is right that's the way it is online is the way to do it and especially now with covid with the coronavirus that's going on there's so many more people that are actually home that are actually doing things remote they're even learning the tools that you know four months back they had no clue how to use zoom they had no clue how to use video conferencing on Facebook they had no clue and even the platforms are starting to come out with new things like Facebook's got the rooms now right and there's different things coming out that are being um, developed because of this change in the fact that people are home and being online and there's lots of people that you know lost their jobs they're actually looking for ways to make money so what what do I, why am I telling you this right well just to let you know what the purpose of what I do is so that you can understand why you should be following me I'm teaching different things all the different aspects of building a business online like um, building relationships understanding social media versus general online advertising how you can use social media to build your uh, your business how well why you want to use social media these things are all covered in the different little uh, tips I do and if you go back through previous episodes you're going to see all these different things so there's lots of different things so if you follow me and you listen to a little thing every day you're going to learn because every day you learn a little new thing you maybe you'll try something maybe you'll implement something maybe you'll figure something out that you hadn't thought of and that's that's what I do right okay so that what I'm doing right now so how did I get there right maybe I can back up a little bit when I was a teenager I f I fell in love with computers my father actually got me one of those computers I don't know if you're a computer geek or not but he got me a TRS-80 model 3 the from Radio Shack back in the day it was a computer that had uh there was you know it was half price at the time uh, when I graduated but before that I actually got a Sinclair ZX81 which one little little computer like this it's it was the size of a well I guess a tablet now the size of a tablet but there was no screen on it you had to connect it to a tv and there was a little keyboard on it you type the keyboard on it and I programmed things I did all sorts of things so I learned computers back then I also learned about 
stock market I learned about and you know investing in the stock market how you buy and sell what are asks and bids and what are I don't remember that much too much anymore because I'm not really into that there but back then I was really excited about being in the stock market learning things especially when I was around my early 20s around 20 well 18 to 20 I had a friend that was into that and we did these charts and I I recorded I, I had a subscription to financial post magazine I uh, not magazine but newspaper and I would uh, the financial post and I would I would record the information in the computer every single day and then I would create charts after a week or two weeks or a month I was like really into it that's totally insane that's like whatever right but I'm the kind of person who likes to do things regularly and then look at the results after a while right so when I was uh then I started working in computers when I well in the beginning actually you know what one of the interesting story is that I've always wanted to make money right so I was attracted to, to opportunities that could potentially make me lots of money compared to just a regular job like for example I don't remember when that was but I actually had the opportunity to work at a an apple store I I was interviewed the guy hi, was hiring me he was like okay you can start Monday it was like one of those early apple stores today I think to myself well maybe I should have taken that it would have been but it would definitely have given me a totally different path than what I'm on now instead what I did is I accepted a job as a salesman for rainbow uh, vacuum cleaners it was like one of those jobs where they would call and they would find uh, customers that you would go and do a demo for the customer would be willing to let you in their house do a demo of the vacuum for a free gift right and the idea was that you'd be on the phone with your boss and the boss would be like oh we just got this crazy deal right now oh my god really Mr customer look I'm telling my, my boss right now and he we got this amazing deal and maybe would you like to hear about it and, and then you're like this and you, they don't know and you it's like this urgency thing and whatever right so they do all these things I, I lasted like I don't know four months there and ended up working as a computer uh, technician at Ottawa University eventually in, the, in between then and there I, I I sold cars and I also managed a Radio Shack store but I ended up as a computer consultant in the university not consultant a computer technician at the Ottawa University for many years I worked there and uh, it was kind of cool because I would go underneath those tunnels between the buildings to bring equipment and I there was one tunnel I remember was like one of the oldest tunnels there it was like just the width of a human a, a one person you couldn't really carry anything there was all these wires all these cables I probably have pictures somewhere of that but those were kind of the days right I mean and uh, that's when I went met my first wife we had two daughters and uh, today they're 25 and 26 uh we actually lived in California for one year in 1996 in Los Angeles around the Los Angeles area and uh back then I learned Linux I started using Linux and I decided to to build this product afterwards that was like a product of how to um, set up an office server on an old computer so basically you would put the cd in you would turn it on and it would convert that old computer into an office uh, server you know with file server web server ftp server uh, emit print server all these things that were the buzzwords back then that didn't re that weren't really easy to get you'd have to buy a windows nt at the time it was windows and that's kind of how I started my my journey into computer programming I and uh, at that time I was working for a company called Yark Systems which was a Linux based uh, raster image processor anyways whatever it was all technical stuff te technical mumbo technical mumbo jumbo back then our daughters were three and two and uh, that that year we were in California it was a great it was great to live in California but the fine the cost of living down there and everything was insane it was insane we, we really just we really didn't enjoy it uh, as much as we should have we weren't we didn't really go to to the beach that much we didn't go we we didn't see much we didn't do much because we didn't the finance the money the income and the cost of renting was totally insane so we really weren't making any money we couldn't really enjoy it right so we were there for a year came back and then I started a company called Mulex I started a company and that company I started with that product I was telling you about that basically turned a, a computer into a server 
and that were that worked out for about two years at the end of that uh, we were stuck in the uh, y2k or the the dot-com bust in 1999 2000 right where everybody was investing in Linux and then all of a sudden nobody was investing so our company we were looking for extra funding nobody was investing we couldn't find any funding we ran out of money so we had to shut down and that's that's the story of that but I had at that time I I was I had of, of about 20 percent of the company the company was valued at I think it was six million or so or maybe 10 million I forget but I was a millionaire right on paper I was a millionaire I owned more than a million dollars worth of the company and uh, we had to shut it down so it was kind of cool to have that feeling of being a millionaire but you know when you don't have the money to do anything it's just on paper it really doesn't make any difference right so that's kind of where I was back then and after that um I just got more and more jobs into the computer field I worked more in computers and also around that time I just well actually before then in 1991 or so I joined an MLM company I learned about the network marketing industry how how it teaches you to build a business how it teaches you to build relationship how it teaches you to sell how it teaches you to grow your you know circle of influence how to how to approach people all these different things I learned from that I was in that network marketing company for six years or so actually uh, four or five years before we went to California when we came back that was kind of over I didn't really go back to it but I always thought to myself that's the way you build a business from nothing right because network marketing is all about building a business with a very low uh, startup cost right some of them are zero now there's lots of them out there there's millions of companies out there that use network marketing as a but it's basically an it's basically a a, a way to market things right I mean if you consider network marketing versus traditional businesses there's always a cost of a product versus the marketing of it right so the marketing of a product is usually almost half the price of the product once you sell to consumer right if you think of a product you buy for 100 bucks at Walmart well Walmart probably paid 75 bucks for it they advertise or they have these signs or they pay their employees they pay their warehouse they pay their bus drive uh, bus drive <laughs> they pay their their truck drivers all that that's part of their cost right and then whoever sells it to Walmart for 75 bucks probably manufactured it for 50 bucks or maybe not even maybe their their warehouse they're the middleman for 50 bucks and they're making 25 bucks to sell it to Walmart their advertising and their marketing and their inventory holding and their warehousing fees and their trucking fees and everything else right and then maybe they bought it from a manufacturer out in the, in China that that spent 20 bucks on it but it cost them five or ten bucks per unit to ship it to uh, to America and all these things so you know the cost of the item is is half priced of whatever you're selling or less right so network marketing the only difference is that there's no middleman there's no there's no advertising on tv there's none of that it, basically they make the product and you resell it for them right and you get the 50 percent or the team gets it and that's how it's spread out in the team right but the point is that the mar network marketing is just a different way of marketing a, pr a product right and I thought that was really awesome and so that's why I'm, I'm still a believer in network marketing but it's not something that I'm that I'm focusing on now it's not something that I really um I really want to spend time on now because I got so much other stuff going on so from a personal perspective after that uh, what happened is I um we were in Ottawa for f for many years until 2005 or so when you know we had a divorce whatever and we got separated and we got uh, the anyway so that's just part of the life part of life things happen I moved to Fredericton for a new job at the time in 2005 and uh, what happened then uh, in 2010 I met my new wife that we're with our we have our two daughters now seven and five and uh, things are awesome uh, but in 2000 uh, so four five years ago now so 2015 I lost my job that I was working at and I had to find a new job I ended up working in Montreal finding a job in Montreal because where we're at right here in Charlottetown uh, I couldn't we couldn't find it I couldn't find something that would pay enough to cover our bills or whatever right so I mean the cost of living uh, versus the um, 
the 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 pay you can get in a job is based on where the location is right so I had to find a job in one in a big city I actually was looking for everywhere I was looking for things everywhere but it took about six months before I found something in the in Montreal so started working in Montreal and you know the the intention was that within a year or so I'd be back home be making money online that just didn't work out yet and I'm still working on that and finding different things and learning a lot of stuff about online marketing and learning about you know the tools that you, you need to use to build a business online like uh, autoresponders like automated posting like and then the strategies and the tools and the techniques that you need to use on social media to actually build like for example on Facebook I can post every single day on Facebook but if I don't do the the work that Facebook wants me to work which is engaging on other people's posts which is commenting on other people's posts liking posts and sharing things if I don't actually take action on other people's posts well nobody's going to see my posts so it won't matter I can post every day I'm going to get one or two people to see my posts even if I have 5,000 friends it doesn't matter right so if I don't do the the activities that Facebook wants me to do then nothing will happen nothing will be done nothing my my audience will not grow because they won't see my stuff and that's one of the things unless you spend money and you use what they call pages or they used to be called fan pages but now they're called business pages unless you use those to, and pay advertising you're not going to get people to see your stuff unless you engage unless you do what the platform wants you to do which means spend time on the platform and click on things and do things right and it's the same with all the other platforms so today I'm basically posting every single day um you know I'm actually right now because of COVID I'm actually home with my family which is awesome um and but I eventually I'm gonna have to go back to Montreal unless I grow my business online and generate income online so that I can actually quit my job but in my case my income is pretty high so I would have to make a lot of money online which is possible obviously people make lots of money some people make lots of money online but it's not something that takes you know a few months to do you got to learn all the different things and you got to put in place processes and mechanisms that that allow people to see you to know you to trust you to learn from you so that they get eventually buy from you right but for them to buy from you, you got to have this stuff to sell <laughs> so it's all a big circle of things but if you listen to people like Russell Brunson he talks about he talks about you know the one thing he talks about your value ladder he talks about your attractive character he talks about soap opera sequence emails he talks about Seinfeld sequence emails he talks about funnels he talks about um you know um, one-time offers he talks about uh, upsells he talks about audience growing your audience he talks about the hero's journey he talks about all these different things and there's so much to learn and that's the stuff that I've been learning and growing and recently I've been uh, actually part of this um octo content model this this journey with one of my mentors uh that basically teaches us to taught me how to you know use one piece of content which is kind of what I'm doing right now I'm recording one piece of content use that piece of content and take pieces out and post it everywhere so that you're everywhere but you're not spending time creating content for every single platform you're not spending it well you still are kind of because you're taking that one piece and cutting pieces out and adding maybe text on it and doing things like that but you're still not creating brand new content for every single platform and it's it helps a lot and you're as you do it you learn more and more how to do it how, what's the better approach and you because you know I remember in the beginning I basically made a list oh, I gotta do this I gotta do that I gotta do this I gotta do that and every day I would create my video and then I would create the audio out of it and I would do this and I would do that and then I would have to go through them a list I would say okay did I do this did I do that did I do this did I do that and it would take me like literally an hour an hour and a half to do so I would have to do it in the morning then I would do some at lunch then I would do some in the evening to kind of get it all done in one day and my goal was to do one post a day everywhere and now I'm doing a lot better it's it's taking me almost just half an hour to to create or to share it everywhere so you know half an hour to do the video obviously and then maybe another half hour to create a blog post and then a half an hour to share it everywhere so it's a, a, like an hour and a half a day right <clears throat> which is which is awesome in the beginning it would take me two three hours to do right so I'm hoping that I'm going to get it cut down even a little bit more 
or maybe what I can do is I can do uh, only a couple posts a week instead or something like that but that's kind of where I'm headed right what is it that I you know what do I uh, need to do to get things to even get to a point where it's taking even less time and you know one of the solutions obviously is to hire a VA get somebody else to do some of the things I record the video and they do the I record the video so basically if I could get to a point where I can record the video and create the blog post those two things which are my creativity coming out of me right if I can do those two things and have somebody else do the rest then that would mean it would take me just an hour a day maybe even less if I do it once a day if I want to do it once a week it's an hour a week and then somebody else does the rest right and, and you can re and the way that uh, that uh, my mentor was teaching is that you can repurpose the same content that you did once a week you just take different parts of it over the week to share on different social media platforms right so you get your uh, amount of engagement on your one content your one um, your blog post and your YouTube video for example which is the the the, the pillar content for that week you get more people on there more people to actually see it because you're resharing it over the week right so that's an approach that is uh, that has some benefits to it so you're not creating new content every day I'm not sure maybe I will do that I don't know what do you think let me know if you think that's the way I should go but I like doing one piece of content a day because it it forces me to learn some things and to really get better at it uh, although it does feel like I'm getting less done because that's my main activity is creating these these this this episode creating the episode every day takes you know the, all that time right so it takes an hour and a half a day for example right so that means an hour and a half a day that means over the week it's uh what five plus two and a half so seven and a half hours like almost 10 hours a week to just do my content and I don't do anything else right there's lots of other stuff I need to do and right now I'm building the platform right click ecourse is the platform for course creators for marketers for affiliate marketers to produce content that they can share there's tons of platforms out there obviously but the, the click ecourse platform has got some really unique features and they're um, they're meant for marketers for somebody who wants to promote who wants to make money online who wants to generate residual income so you know it's gonna obviously it has obviously membership uh, process uh, systems automated payments monthly payments you get commission every month and you can have people promote your course and you can give them commission you get email lists you get I mean it's all based on marketers marketer who wants to generate income online and that's what Click eCourse is all about and that's what I'm building on now that's what I'm working now uh what else can I tell you what else can I oh I remember one story you know one of the things that's really funny is how your parents know what's going on in your head right they know what's going on inside this thing they can understand they can they can they can read your mind you right they can read your mind your parents can read your mind right I mean what does it mean that a parent can read your mind to give you give you an example of a story is when I was uh probably when was that that was in 70 something I probably was I probably was like 14 or 15 or so we my, my brother and I is a year younger than me so yeah so I have a, a brother that's one year younger and a sister that's three years older than me so my brother and I we were out just you know messing around going around the, the neighborhood and we came across this used car lot and inside the used car lot there was this little metal shed in the middle of the place so we went in that shed and my brother thought it was a great idea to start a fire because there was a fire pit in there it was meant for that and he just like you know lit a match and started a fire and put a few things in there and we had you know some fun just looking at that fire burn or whatever and then we left and then when we get when we got back home I remember thinking to myself we should, my, our mother is not going to be happy about that right she's not going to be happy about us doing that and I was like yeah we're not going to tell her we just you know we just set out the first and the first thing my brother says when we come in the door is we didn't make a fire I was like what the <laughs> why would you tell her that she she doesn't know but you know obviously she would have known anyways because we probably smelled like smoke or something and maybe that's why he said it because he knew she would guess but at the same time to me it was like why would you say something 
that you didn't do when there wasn't even that question asked and that's kind of what you got to watch out online don't tell people you're not making a million if you're if they're not asking they don't need you don't need to tell them you're not making a million right but anyways that's kind of one of those stories that you know happens in your in your life that you're like what what the hell happened there right anyways so that's that's kind of my story or at least part of my story uh like I said um if you have any other questions if you want to know what some of the something I didn't answer some or you want clarification just go ahead and comment or send me a message and I'd love to answer your question and to help you to generate income online I want to help you generate income online you 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 right there that's watching <laughs> you need to generate income online be home with your family all right until next time this has been John Serge Gagnon and we'll see you in the next episode this has been Course Income Secrets, the entrepreneur's blueprint to generating income from the e-learning boom. Ooh. Some of your friends need to hear this message, so don't forget to share. For more content like this, go to CourseIncomeSecrets.com and make sure to subscribe and follow us here. My name is Jean-Serge Gagnon, until next time.